What's up, heathens? Uh, today on our hobby hero section, we have everybody's favorite hobby uncle. Uh, one of the gentlemen that, you know, if he merged with Vince Venturella, we'd somehow get the hobby Yoda. Uh, the Adam Smasher himself, Mr. Adam Loper. What's going on, Adam? How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. I think uh, a lot of people have uh, a couple of questions when it comes to you, because as I mentioned before, you kind of are our hobby Yoda um the the voice of reason when it comes to hobbying mm -hmm. uh which i think is something that we need from uh you know matters that we've discussed that we won't be talking about on air uh, what kind of comes into the idea of a lot of the videos and opinions is it just pure experience or is it looking at it objectively i think that it, it well so it comes from honestly it comes from a place of I am trying to the, the the mission of the channel, frankly, is to try to get people into tabletop wargaming. Like that's the whole idea. Is I'm trying yep. to get people into tabletop wargaming. So I try to take a look at every subject or any kind of discussion that comes up from that lens. Like if you are new to the hobby, would this make sense? You know, if you're new to the hobby, is this the way that you would think? You know, I there there have been things before where like videos have come out or not, I'm sorry, not videos, videos I've ended up having to make because a new product has come out yep. that ha that I've gotten feedback from, from from viewers who are like, I don't understand, like um, when they relaunched uh, Apocalypse probably oh, like yeah. four yep. years ago, I had a, a guy that I knew who was getting, new getting into the hobby and he's like, so do I have to get this 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 add-on? Is this what, and I was like, oh no, no, you don't, you don't have near enough models. Like that's what this is for. This is for people who've already got way too many models and want something else to do with them. But it wasn't really particularly clear specifically yeah. to newer people. And so I was like, I should make a video about Apocalypse even though normally it's not something that you would, you know, tell new people about but it's something that you would at least let them know this is for if you want to play humongous giant games as opposed yeah. to you know whatever that kind of thing so so that's part of it um i think age is a part of it too i've been doing this for a long time um and i don't know i think i've just always been relatively even keeled you know i think yeah. that wargaming is for everybody and i think that everybody should be involved that wants to and so that's always been kind of my um opinion i guess you know so that's the, th the, the, the type of things that i have a tendency to talk about so, and and that's great because we when we come to intellectual ips as you know a lot of wargaming games uh kind of flying over across now uh, especially where we had things like a uh, shadow point coming out um mm -hmm. marvel crisis protocol legions you know we're we're pulling ips from a lot of established um kind of franchises and there's yeah. some very strong feelings uh, when people come to those kind of things. It's very romanticized. I think a, yeah. a voice of reason is something that we all kind of need to keep in mind. I, I th yeah, for sure. Um, we we need to keep in mind that this is us. This is people playing, uh, you know, literally with kind of toys, right? Yeah. You know, I'm I'm in my early fifties, and I a big portion of what I do any given day is thinking about or painting or, you know, whatever, or reading news about like literally, you know, uh, you know, plastic toy soldiers or sometimes resin, sometimes metal, usually plastic. <laughs> and um, it's just a situation where like you have to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, I mean, it's the same thing with, with elk. I mean, it's not, you, you see it as well, just in like books and movies and all kinds of different properties where this, this whole concept of like, no, this is very, very serious. And you're like, no, this is star Wars. We're talking about <laughs> like, you know, laser swords and whatnot. And I'm not to, it's not to discount the, um, you know, it's not to discount the, how much people enjoy those those stories and what they yeah, mean yeah. to people, but they do have to understand that they are still just stories, and so yeah. it's not the real world. You know what I mean? And that's that's the thing that I like. Guess I also like to kind of push a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Because a, a lot of people do take um, a lot of stuff. Like I, I come from a big comic book background, uh, mm -hmm. where you know, obviously Marvel and DC, they kind of become personality traits for a lot of people in the circle. Sure. It's uh, but let's touching on that experience. You know, you're in your early fifty thousands now. I remember seeing uh, a video where you spoke about um, you know, starting you starting out. Uh, I think it was your babysitter kind of introduced you to to D and D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and that was that was what like uh, 
So I think you said year five, which would make you roughly 10, 11. So this upcoming March, so a month and a half away, will be the beginning of March will be my 10 year, uh, 10 year anniversary on the channel. Like that's how long I've channel. been doing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, technically the channel started in 2009, like as far yep. as YouTube is concerned, but I didn't really start making like as as tabletop minions is known today yep. i didn't really start making content for it until early march like march 1st or something like that 2013 yep. so yeah it'll be 10 years coming up real soon yeah 10 years for the channel and like f four decades as a war gamer yeah uh, well Close so i started out i mean i started out with like i said in um you know like with D D, yep. and i did that and then i got into in middle school i got into some battle tech yeah. And then in, in high school, I didn't really do any kind of tabletop gaming at all. I was uh, on the high school newspaper and I got into photography and I was getting into like video games, like console stuff, you know, Nintendo and whatnot. And then um, it was then in college, I got back into tabletop again and started playing uh, some role playing games again, like um, Role Master by this yep. company called Iron Crown Enterprises, uh, old school. And then um, so that was that. And then I had. Um, Let's see, what else did I do? Uh, then I also got back into Battletech a little bit in college. And then after that, it's when I started getting into the other stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a, I think it's very reminiscent of a lot of people's hobby stories. Uh, you know, we, we kind of find it early on and, you know, things pop up. Uh, for me, uh, I started when I was about 12, 13, uh, mm -hmm. which was like third edition for Warhammer 40K, um, getting into the Lord of the Rings side because I was very much into Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. um but though you know uh, you hit uh you hit puberty and uh for me it was guitar and girls uh kind of drag you off the the side a little bit um uh, but there i've i've been in and out same thing for the last 20 years and it's funny how a lot of things change but it is all very very the same yeah, I mean, it's definitely we're seeing licenses get involved a lot more. You know, like you mentioned, like Star Wars and 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 um, you know, and uh, also like the Marvel stuff and other games as well. And um, you know, we've seen Halo, we've seen yep. things kind of come and go and whatnot. But it, it is really more about, um, I don't know, like when I got back into war gaming and everything like that, probably late '90s, early 2000s. Um, and I was interested in miniatures and I was interested in terrain, but I wasn't interested in playing, let's say, Warhammer, for example, because yep. it was a it was a big game and I didn't have the kind of money for that was many that many models and all that kind of stuff. So I was and there weren't that many skirmish games back then either. So I was constantly trying to find like a weird skirmish game that I could get into. And then it wasn't until about fifth edition uh, 40K when I finally started actually playing 40K. But even then, at that time, we were playing um combat patrol which back yep. then was like 400 points instead yep. of the 500 points it is now and there were like special rules about how many wounds you could have and how big your vehicle could be and all that kind of stuff but that's what we would play pretty much on the regular with the idea of moving up until we got to like 1500 points and yep. then 2000 or whatever um but it's very interesting to see how the industry has changed and how uh, skirmish gaming has really started to become such a focus because these businesses are finally starting to realize if I can get them to play the skirmish game, eventually they might upgrade to the point where they start playing the bigger army game. Or maybe they don't need to play the army game at all, but maybe they want to start three or four different skirmish armies, which would basically yeah. add up to a big army game, you know, yeah. as far as models are concerned. Um, and that just wasn't a thing. That just wasn't what people were thinking back then. And so I'm glad to see that change. That's for me, I think a definite positive change, you know, um, because I prefer playing at that kind of yeah. size. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I, I'm I'm the same. I, as far as 40K goes, um, just because, you know, I have the most experience with 40K um, mm -hmm. as far as any one system goes. But same thing, I love the the combat patrols the your 500 points because you know you can kind of get in and out in under an hour like you can have a couple of games in an afternoon mm -hmm. instead of uh you know 2000 points which can really start to drag on some days yeah yeah and that's it does it changes a lot of the the feel and the enjoyment aspect i don't want to be exhausted when i get home from gaming right exactly i i've got this odd, odd idea that i think games should be fun and i know yeah. it's weird but but it is, and 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 you know, there. This is to certainly say, obviously, there are folks out there who are like, well, I'm not interested in anything unless it's like a huge, massive spectacle and a huge, giant game, and that's what they dig, and that's cool. Yeah. 
I'm just glad that there's options now because there didn't yeah. really used to be. So for people who are interested in playing the the big game, you know, or the big games, whatever, um, I those are obviously still available. And then there are also small, you know, small games available from whether you're going with the big companies or whether you're going with the small companies. There's yeah. There's big army games coming from small companies. There's, you know, small army games coming from small companies. There's all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, no, and there's there's really, really good variety as far as uh, what we're saying now. We're getting there. I think that people are still, a lot of people are still really believing that the entire hobby is Warhammer and there's yeah. nothing else. And <laughs> I, I'm trying to try to f help fix that idea a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, it takes time. It does, uh, especially when it becomes so ingrained. Like, you think of role-playing games, you instantly go to D&D. &D. Uh, and there is uh, so many uh, campaign-style games like D&D. &D. Uh, some are better. Uh, you know, we see a lot of people swapping over to things like Pathfinder and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, it, I think it, it very much is, you know, it's, it's not a Kleenex, it's a tissue kind of issue. Mm -hmm. It's a facial tissue. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's always kind of interesting when people, like, so Vince and I have uh, published a couple of games, and yep. people will ask us, well, so what models is, am I supposed to use with it? And we're like, well, it's miniature agnostics. You can use whatever kind of models you want, you know, like, that's the concept. And with some folks, like, the concept of, like, oh, this game doesn't have a model line. I'm going to have to come up with my own models. That's, like, a downside. Yeah. And for people, other people, specifically like me, I, I'm like, oh, this game doesn't have its own models, so I'm going to have to come up with my own models. And that's that's a, that's a benefit. Yeah. Um, but there are some folks that are just, like, I don't get the concept. I don't understand yeah. it. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's fine. Um, but we, you know, we both kind of strongly believe that the concept of you make some models that you can use in multiple games is fun and also economical you know what i mean yeah. it's like if yeah. you have this set of models that only works with this one game mm -hmm. otherwise it looks weird in every other game well then that seems kind of odd but if you've got space soldiers or aliens of some flavor or you know skeletons or knights or whatever and you can use them in this and that and the other thing i don't have you know a problem with that i think that's great yeah. and then it allows you to be able to again, kind of double dip, and it's not trying to tie you down as much into a specific, yeah. you know, uh, ecosystem. But that's what, you know, generally the big ecosystems kind of want to do. Yeah. And so I also, uh, Miniature Agnostic also kind of, it opens the back window for a lot of the uh, the 3D SDL designers out there. Absolutely. Um, because, you know, as we see famously with Games Workshop, um, they don't really allow third-party uh, parts or miniatures in tournament, which does make it a little harder, but, you know, that's them. That's what they do. Uh, yeah. But there's so many cool uh, little companies and boutique makers uh, making out, bringing out fantastic miniatures. Um, it's It really is good that there, there's some kind of, like I said, like a, a back window open for them to, to actually see table use, not just sitting on my computer because i love them but i don't know what to use them for yet right you know i mean it's a situation that i think that's very interesting because now and i made a video about this relatively recently um with 3d printing it's really more about freedom yeah and it's more about you saying you know because it, a company a big company or even a small company if they're going to produce a miniature like a plastic miniature they have a lot of things they have to think about before production even starts oh, yeah. is this going to be worth it it's going to be very expensive are we able to make our money back there's return on investment which i totally get um with 3d sculpting you and, and, and printing stls and all that kind of stuff you don't have to think that hard about it because honestly the question is like, especially if you're a person who's doing it by yourself, if you're just a person who's a, a, a talented sculptor or maybe a group of talented sculptors, it's you only have to think about getting paid, like as yeah. far as whether you're doing some sort of Patreon or, or anything, you know, along those lines, or if you're doing, you know, like my mini factory or one of those types of things, you put that model out there and you go, will I at least get paid? Probably, you know, and as you get better, you're going to get paid more and more and that kind of thing. But you're not going to have to think about mold making. You're not going to think yeah. have to think about warehousing. You're not going to have to think about fulfillment and how to get yeah. it to the other side <laughs> of the planet and all that stuff. It's literally just like, once I've finished it, I put it out there and then people it's out, you know, that's awesome. And, and so you can make really weird and interesting things that probably wouldn't have sold very well in plastic. Wouldn't have, you know, 
gotten your you 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 your ROI, but there's probably enough people out there that could definitely make it worth yeah. your while to be able to do that because again, you don't have to worry about the production and storage and travel and logistics and all that jazz. Yeah. Yeah, no, the the overhead of uh, kind of running mm -hmm. any business that's that's the crusher for a lot of things. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, with we've had people, Vince, pe people have asked Vince and I, like, well, why don't you guys just do a Kickstarter and then get the books printed in China and then ship them all over the place and do all that normal stuff? And we're like, there's no, we don't want to. You know what I mean? Like, we work <laughs> with this company that takes care of the PDFs. They do all the P PDF fulfillment. We make the stuff, but then they do it, and then the prints. It's all print on demand, so we don't have any warehousing fulfillment like any yep. of that stuff. And we can also then, because of that too, we can also make the stuff, I mean, the books are relatively inexpensive because I'm yep. also, both of us are really interested in being, you know, uh, inclusive and being able to get people, it's access accessibility is really yep. the important thing. If, if, you know, could we have sold those books for 35 bucks? Yeah, maybe, but you know, we sold them for like 15 and 18 bucks because it, then more people will be like, oh, cool, I'll, I'll, I'll buy that, you know I mean? Yeah. So it just kind of makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely. I've got a, I've got a copy of each for, for Rain and Hell and Space Station mm -hmm. Zero. But um, I suppose coming into that, I, I think that would probably be a, a lovely little segue is how is the next game going? Now we saw um, with, uh, with Miniac video and Vince's videos uh, about Vincicon and there was some play mm -hmm. testing mm -hmm. going on. Yep. How's that all shaping up? There was a little bit more playtesting going on last weekend, actually, too, because uh, Vince and our developer, uh, who is uh, Tom, you know, from the Warhammer yep, Weekly yep. show. Yep. Um, so Tom is the developer. He's been the developer on the last two games. He's the developer on this one. And and I did not even know this. Like, the designers, like, we're the designers. The developer's job, of, from what I understand, the way it's been explained to me, is that, like, it's generally their job to like do the math, try to find the ways to break it so that we can fix those parts. And it's it's just a, basically, it's like stress testing and math yep. and a lot of that so that you can come back and go, oh, okay, well, this is a big glitch or this is a big yep. hole or something like that. And we have to fix that kind of stuff. So actually he and Vince got together last weekend um, and, um, and did several play tests and whatnot. So writing is basically done there's a few more little bits and bobs and we need to go through and do a glossary because that's always an important thing that we need to do and then also an example of play but example of play is a really good idea to do last because yeah. you know if you do an example of play and then change a bunch of rules you have to redo the example of play the so thing. Yeah, yeah. um yeah exactly so so that's that's pretty close and then uh, just getting into february is when layout's going to start Yep. Uh, and that's when things kind of shift gears over towards me because I'm uh, layout and art direction and all that jazz. Um, and uh, yeah, we're we're hoping to have it out like late late um, late spring okay. slash early summer. Kind of depends, yep. you know. But like that's where we're targeting. Last year uh, with Space Station Zero, it didn't come out till the end of August, yep. and that was partially just us. Like the previous game had come out late May. And then this game came out in um, late August. And the reason it was not the same time was mainly because of the artist who was spectacular and did amazing work. Oh, yeah, but he's also super uh, busy. And as it turned out, the job that he had leading up to, like he was going to start drawing our stuff in February 2022. And he couldn't actually start drawing it until May because of the previous job. And they were all these changes and all this kind of stuff. So um, from what I understand, like that was basically the case. And we were like, well, we could look for different artists, but we really don't want to. This is the guy, you know. And so um, and it, it turned out amazing. But we were like, well, we're self-publishers and we can come out with a game when we want to. So yeah. um, but going we forward, we do want to. Exactly. We do want to have something a little bit more uh, nailed down. So we're just basically figuring out our um our deadlines uh, vince has got a, a a heck of a background in um oh, yeah. pro project management so yeah that that's been super helpful as well um we work really well together because we both have kind of different skill sets and all that kind of stuff but they they mesh real nice which is it's great i think it's important to find if you can oh yeah and like i i've said this probably at least 20 times on the internet now Vince lives rent free in my head every time I pick up a brush. Uh, that sure. has slowly sure. uh, kind of taken into every time I think about a game mechanic. Um, especially after speaking with him on, you know, one of these hobby videos and just mm -hmm. the, the kind of insights that he gives. 
um, things that you may not have actually thought about before or what you have thought about in a slightly different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so- there's, a, there's a lot that goes behind uh, yeah. what's going on in, in tabletop gaming in general. Yeah. And, um, and I think that it's, you know, just like there's a lot going behind technology, there's a lot going behind content creation. There's like, you know, a lot of these things uh, that the average person doesn't necessarily think about, but they probably have a job that they do whatever they do. And there's people don't realize what goes into, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of always behind the scenes and everything. And, um, but, but Vince is real knowledgeable specifically about the tabletop gaming, you know, design space and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, when I, when I kind of came up with the idea for Rain in Hell, I reached out to Vince and I was like, hey, is this a thing that you think would be interesting and we, we could work together on? And he's like, yeah. And then we worked together on it for a while and we were getting closer towards publication. And I was like, do you want to keep doing this? Like do another game and then just like make this into a company? And he's like, yeah, this is, this is great. And so, yeah, that's, um, that's where we're at. No, that's great. Okay, so as, uh, as we were talking about a little before we hit record, uh, we don't get a lot of hobby drama. Uh, you know, we've had the, the JH miniatures and spiky bits thing, uh, which seems a little manufactured on one side, not mentioning names. Um, what do you think of uh, the recent actions with Wizards of the Coast with, uh, with their agreements for D&D and third party? I guess it's... It... So I don't find it surprising. Yep. It's bad. <laughs> It's, it's bad, bad, but I don't su- find it surprising. Um, they're a big, huge corporation, um, and so and owned by Hasbro now. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I've been owned, ha- owned by Hasbro for for some time now. Yeah. So I, 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 there's a suit somewhere yeah. who was like, "Well, this is we need to. We're leaving money on the table. We need to make more money because the." It does seem as if generally the like huge corporations. It's not that they want more money; it's that they want all the money, and yeah. so. You know, this 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 person who I'm assuming is probably a non gamer was like, Well, this will this will make us more money. And because more things keep coming out, you know, initially there yeah. was that OGL one point one and all that kind of stuff. And I read a little bit about that and I was like, Well, that's all bad. And then <laughs> there was the talk recently about how it came out that they had these plans to charge something like thirty bucks a month for one D and D. So they think that people will pay three hundred and sixty dollars a year just so that they can play uh, a tabletop, or, you know, game like that. Which, I, again, they don't seem to understand their their audience. But again, I think a lot of the people who work for Wizards of the Coast understand the audience because they are the audience. They're they're gamers yeah. and whatnot. But now they've landed this job and they get to design and this and that and the other thing. But I don't think it's. I really don't believe it's them who are, you know, driving yeah. this boat. It's it's they're being told this is what we're going to do, and they can raise their hands and go, "That's not going to work." If they if they want to be bold, um, and you know, it's obviously it's not doing anything. Um, and then now I guess today there was talk about how the survey that they've been asking people to fill out, like it has come out that according from several sources that inside the company, I think they've read something today on, on Twitter that they're just like, they're not paying attention to that survey. Like if you yeah. sit there and write your comments into the box that they give you, no one's looking at it. They're just doing it because they want you to do it there. They don't want you to yeah. email them. They don't want you to, you know, blah, blah. So um, I guess, but here's the thing. I, A, I'm not a role player. So that's not particularly, uh, you know, I'm I'm not... I guess I may be a little bit more callous about it, but let's say that GW did exactly the same thing somehow or whatever, or something as, as bad on a scale, I would be just like, okay, cool. I'm not playing any of their games. I mean, as it is right now, like I don't particularly like what they've done with 40 K and I don't particularly like what they've done with age of Sigmar. And I don't particularly like what they've done with, um, with kill team. And, uh, what, I, what what has happened in that situation is I don't play 40K and I don't play Age of Sigmar and I don't play Kill Team. You know what I mean? Like, that's not... Yeah. Like, I, I play other games. I play still War Warcry because they made Warcry 2.0 and didn't screw it up. So, like, that's the answer. Like, we, and, it, and again, I'm not a role player anymore, particularly, but I used to do it. It seems to me like the story is the most important thing, yeah. not the rule system. That's kind of flipped backwards in, in at least in my opinion, with wargaming. In yeah. wargaming, if the rule system's bad, I don't care what the story's like or the models. I'm not going to play a bad rule system. But in role playing, if you have this campaign that you and your people have been doing for like you know two years, 
it it's a pain in the butt, but just changing out the system and throwing a different system in there, but still having the world and the concepts and the characters and all that stuff. Like, I don't know. It To me, it seems... And I know that people are angry, but the way you basically hurt the people who are doing this is stop buying any other stuff. And obviously that's been going on with the Beyond D&D &D yeah. and all that kind of stuff, all the people canceling their um, subscriptions and whatnot. That totally is the way you should do it, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just vote with your wallet and and start start thinking indie. I mean, that's just I've, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that in wargaming. Yep. Um, I I talk about Warhammer stuff because again, like I said, the mission of the channel is to talk to people who are getting into the hobby, and that's what they're gonna that's what they're gonna hear about first. Generally, yep. is they're gonna learn about Warhammer. Um, and so I'll talk about some of those things, but then I'll also talk about you know like indie games like Space Weirdos or Zona Alpha. Zona Alpha is kind of indie. I mean, it's it's yeah it's it's published by Osprey, but it, yeah. it's pretty, yeah. But like things like that, because I want to broaden people's uh, horizons to some degree. I'm not just going to yeah. be like, this is, you know, this is the entire hobby and it's just that because it's it's really not. Yeah, I suppose. And, and you brought up, this is slightly off topic, but you, you somewhat touched on it in there about, uh, you know, mechanics and going back to, uh, you know, game design, especially with uh, like the stuff that you've done with Vince as well. Mm -hmm. what is like obviously funds the main objective that's that's the whole reason that we're going to play yep can i i can forgive a a clunky mechanic or a slightly faulty system if it's fun uh if that outweighs if my good time outweighs uh the feels bads and dice rolls or whatever may be is that something that you kind of take into consideration when you're designing the games like can you Will you let a few things slide and just slightly polish them if that's more fun than what a more streamlined version of that would be? Fun is the goal. Yeah. But for honestly, for both of us to some degree, I think that also like streamline is part of the fun. If yeah. if like we we take a look at our games and if we all of a sudden are going, you know, there are maybe too many states here. Like there are too many, like I have to track whether my guy has fell down. You know, is he stunned? Is he this? Is he that? Like, if I need yep. five tokens, no, we don't want to go down that road. So we do take things and go, look, we're going to dial this back because it kind of doesn't matter. The, the, the thing that's under, that people need to really understand about Wargaming is it's, and I think this comes from video games a little bit, um, it's an abstraction. Yeah. Like video games, if you're playing a first-person shooter, like if a missile flies by and it hits the wall behind you and blows up and then it knocks you down and they've pre-programmed all that stuff to work that way, it just works as part of the programming. Yeah. So you get these emergent narratives of things like, oh, that missile missed me, but it hit the wall behind me and blew forward or the building fell on me if they have that kind of mechanics built into the game. Very few do, but you know sometimes you can damage the buildings, that kind of stuff. In a tabletop game, you should not be trying to simulate all no, of that. No. Like you need to really <laughs> abstract everything to make it more interesting and more fun. And the problem yeah. is, is in a lot of games, crunch as is seen as well. Now this is serious gaming. Yeah, it's not. Again, serious and gaming. I mean, I'm not saying that everything needs to be silly all the time. For sure not. But they're, you know, and and again, personal preference. Like I am not. I'm these days particularly just not interested in battle tech anymore and people get angry at me about it, but there's just too much crunch in there for me. There's a lot. Yeah. If you enjoy it, great. You should keep playing it. And I'm glad that you have the ability to do so. There's more stuff coming out. It seems like all the time. I know they're doing another Kickstarter soon, the folks yep. over there at Catalyst and that's great. But for me, it's not necessarily, but I did recently just find a game uh, by Ash Barker and uh, from uh, Death Ray Designs, the folks that do a lot of MDF laser cut yep. stuff. Um, and they've got a game called Steel Rift, and yes. which is, again, yep. a, a, it's a mech game, but uh, I got to play a demo of it at, um, well, actually, Vince and I both got to play a demo of it at Nova, and it was a lot of fun. It's Nova Open, and it's it's far less crunchy. There's a lot less going on there, and I it's just it scratches the itch that I'm looking for. People need to... People need to find the game that they want to play. And I yeah. know there's a lot of people out there that are like, well, I can only play the most popular thing because otherwise who will I play with? Yeah, that's a thing. It is a thing, except that it's also, well, so I think the people who are saying that very frequently may not have a play group or have not yes. tried to or not been successful in kind of like, you know, fostering a play group. Because in yeah. a play group, 
you could just be like, look, I'm going to bring this next week and we're all, we'll all tr I've got this and I've got two sides and we'll play and you'll watch and then we'll, you know, switch out and all that kind of stuff. And then maybe you get people interested or maybe you don't. But if you're like, I go to the store and I sit there with my collection of models and wait until someone comes in to play the game that I want to play. Well, then you have to only play the popular stuff if you want to get games. I get yeah. that. But um, I, I don't, yeah, I, I, I feel like there's more emphasis on that in the in the industry than there ought to be and i think that that's to some degree driven by the play not by the players but by the the companies they're like well yeah. it's the most popular game or it's a very popular game so therefore you should be playing it because you'll always have people to play against and like yeah. well you know yes or no i don't know but <laughs> right yeah i think yeah it, it 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 takes extra work to try to build a, a play group and to you know build a, a group of people that you get together and play with and and then maybe play different games um and that's uh, understandable but yeah. it i think it's worth it i yeah. don't know yeah no so i i'm the same i've got uh i think a lot of us do uh well i don't want to say a lot i think a, a good chunk of us do have a a play group i've got multiple so you know these are the the guys that you know talk about warhammer with for example um mm -hmm. but they're they're very uh you know hey do you guys want a game yeah, sure. Do you want to do a thousand points or two thousand points? Is like, oh, okay, cool. I was actually thinking about uh, Legion, but uh, yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> um, and then yeah, your your other circles. Uh, I I think a lot of people do kind of start to get very tunnel focused, um, uh, with games, and I think it's a big old thing. It's just like in music, um, or any kind of brands, brand names uh sell it's not if they're good or bad it's because they've got the name they've got the they've got that weight and you've got people who get real weird about like you know the like the marvel versus dc thing that we yeah. saw quite a bit over the last several years and you know you're talking about these movies and stuff and don't get me wrong i enjoy superhero movies i've watched most of the marvel stuff i think yeah. and a decent amount of the dc stuff um i haven't watched black adam yet I, yeah, we'll see. But <laughs> the, the point is, is that if I like something, I don't have to be angry about people liking a different thing. It's not, yeah. you know what I mean? It, I made a video about this years and years ago, but like, why do people dislike other people's choices? I saw and that, yeah. a lot, And a lot of it comes from fear. A lot of yeah. it comes from like, I am not, like if, 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 if I'm wrong about what I like, well, that I don't want to be wrong, so I have to instead tell you that you're wrong about what you like, and and it, you know, and it, and again, it also comes from a place of like, well, if nobody, if everyone stops playing the game that I like because you know they're playing something else, and that then I'm against them doing that because then I won't have anybody to play with. So yeah. you know, I mean, and I, I partially this is due like one thing that we're doing with our game company. It, partially this is due to the pandemic, but it's also partially just due to the to the, the social kind of mores. Um, within wargaming, we're putting a lot more emphasis into uh, solo and co-op yeah. because there are people out there who either just don't have any friends to play with that, that are interested. Like they have friends that they, you know, maybe they video game with or they hang around and do stuff with or they go do things or whatever. Or they've got family that they enjoy and love and whatever. But none of the people that they hang around with in their daily life are interested in tabletop wargaming. Maybe not even tabletop gaming at all. And that's, that's the thing. Yeah. So, but they are. So... You know, then very frequently those folks have a tendency to end up just being like, well, I just like to paint and collect. Well, if we can give you something to do with those models you've been painting and collecting and you can play by yourself or yeah. maybe co-op, you know, so there's not any hard feelings about, you know, I'm trying to fight against you. We're, we're fighting together against, you know, the, the, the game. That's, I think, something that, again, something that the big companies aren't doing that much. And so that's another reason that we want to move into that, you know, like basically we may make a game in the future that doesn't have solo and co-op built in it, but we... We have we we don't have any plans to currently, yeah. but uh, yeah, we did that initially with the first launch with um, Rain and Hell. It didn't have solo and co-op built in, and then we had to add an expansion. And we just don't want to make any expansions in the future. <laughs> we just want to put it right in the game so we can get it done, get it out the door, and then start working on the next thing, as opposed yep. to then also having to make an expansion. Yeah, one book, fifteen bucks, you're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, I I'm the same. Like I. I run in a couple of different circles, but I also have, uh, so in, in my real world life, um, I work with underprivileged children as, uh, and run music programs. Mm -hmm. So I run very different hours to a lot of the people in my circle. It's not a, it's not sure. usual nine to five kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I have been looking for a very long time for a lot of solo stuff. 
something that I can just roll dice by myself and still actually mm-hmm. have it be fun. Um, like I know the, there's a few games out there with mechanics like that, like you know with with Rain and Hell, um, and the the Fallout game has a an AI mechanic in it as well, which was which was pretty cool. Uh, I think it could use a little tightening, but it looks mm-hmm. amazing. Um, but even down to the games that I run, the battle reports I've had so far on the channel, uh, where it's just you know me versing a bunch of zombies or mm-hmm. uh, like cross playing. Uh, so I've been making charts for uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol and Legion to be able to play under a 40k kind of system. Uh, so I can run. Uh, I think my my last one was Darth Maul versus uh, Box Walkers, for example. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, through the zombie apocalypse, can Maul get from one point and you know, grab a loot package and drop it off to the church to the survivors? Um, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people have been starting to look for stuff like that, like tabletop simulator. Obviously, uh, that went. It was already pretty big, but it exploded during the pandemic. Oh yeah, for sure, sure. But uh, yeah, no, I, I think I think that is going to be that's somewhere. I think a lot of companies do have to start looking. It's that solo play option where it's still fun. Uh, you know, where you can't just say, oh, they're not going to attack, so I've, I've won. You know, you have to take out that, that kind of thing where you're just choosing to win instead of letting the, the dice decide. Yeah, it is a bit of work. I mean, it, oh, yeah. on the writers on the writers' side, and also as the as the player, you have to pay yeah. attention to generally like a, a kind of a, a list of rules, like an AI kind of a thing. Like, okay, well... If the monster's got, or the bad guy, or whatever, has got this going on, then do this. But if they don't, then they go to the next one. And if they don't do that, and so you're kind of going yeah. this, it's almost like an if-then sort of statement, right? Yeah. And so you have to go through that um, when you want to figure out what's going on. And, you know, but that's part of the, the I think, that's part of the fun, to some degree, I think, yeah. of um, that type of gaming, of, of solo gaming. But it is it's not for everybody some people only ever want to play against other people for you know whatever reason because of it because of the social benefit because they like you know beating and winning and like a competition i mean there's all kinds of different reasons to go down that road but there's also people that are just like i want to like again it's like an emergent kind of like narrative story but except there are some rules that are going to kind of steer the way that the thing goes so you can kind of keep as opposed to just sitting there and just imagining a game in your head you've got a little bit more going on and a reason to use those miniatures that you uh, bought and painted and all that kind of stuff as well yeah yeah no definitely it's and i suppose it's just one of those things like especially in in my situation because you know i can't speak for other people Mm -hmm. running those different hours it's it's one of those things where you know oh i'd I'd really like to play a game but nobody's available because it's three o'clock in the morning um sure so yeah being able to pick something up and just be okay i'm i can run this little campaign i can you know throw some dice for an hour and and do something that isn't just thinking about it or um, sure exactly or or watching better reports like i i take in a lot of content um Mm -hmm. because i i'm i'm a night person and the rest of my sure. family are in bed the second the sun goes down. But um yeah, I, I think there's there's a lot of potential. There. I know it's difficult. Um I've obviously I'm not a an experienced game designer. Um I have tried my hand at it a few times, just working out different bits and pieces and the fun of it, I think. Um I think really doing something in miniatures or in the hobby in general that isn't kind of what's just put out for us um was a fantastic creative exercise um and that started after i watched um vince on trapped under plastic where he was talking about uh designing space station zero Mm -hmm. um yeah i think there's a lot of fantastic things that we can do inside the hobby that isn't actually the hobby itself oh absolutely i mean i i'm a big fan of kit bashing you know um i'm a big fan of even just taking the models that are available and painting them differently and using them in different games and doing different things with them. I mean, right now I've got a project in my workbench where I've got um, a, like four Horus Heresy, like the new Horus Heresy plastics, you know, yep. that came in that, that uh, Age of Darkness box. I've got four of those models. I've got like a Praetor and like three regular, you know, kind of guys. And um, I have... Uh, basically written up lists for one page rules uh grim dark future firefight which is kind yep. of their version of kill team and so i i came up with rules they're battle brothers which is a particular type of army that they you know that they that they, they are kind of space marines in that game and um 
but I swapped out their heads. I didn't use the beaky yeah. heads. I used these <laughs> different weird heads that I found on uh, yeah, someplace. Uh, Puppets War, yep. uh, Cromlech, Max Mini, one of those places. And um, and so I'm just, you know, so I, I'll i be working on them on Twitch and people will come in and be like, what'd you do with their heads? It's like, those guys aren't, are you going to use those for, you're getting into heresy now? And I'm like, no, I'm using these models for something else. I'm using them for a different game. And they're like, can you do that? I'm like, yeah, no, you <laughs> totally can't. Like the police, the police won't come or nothing. Yeah, no, it's uh, you can totally use them for whatever you want. You can get, I mean, like, I was just having a conversation on on, uh, on um, Twitter today, as a matter of fact, about how uh, Necromunda is just not for me. Like it is like the most not for me type game. Like I love yep. the story behind it. I love like what's going on. I would love to play, but it is so incredibly crunchy, and you need like twelve different books and all this stuff. But I buy the models like crazy because I use them for all kinds of other stuff. They're awesome models and everything else about it, but just, eh, you know, it's just not quite um, for me. But the models are, so I buy those and then swap things around. And I've really enjoyed doing that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of creativity in that. There's obviously creativity in the way that you paint and doing all kinds of stuff like that. Writing campaigns, writing up narratives, writing up whatever to play within the normal framework. If you're just going to be like, hey, we're writing a campaign to play regular old 40K, like a crusade yep. thing or whatever. We're not going to buy a book and follow that. We're making our own. Or maybe we use the book as like a jumping off point and then we decided to make all our own stuff. You can get creative that way. Um, there's people obviously that are doing a lot of work on Instagram and um, you know places like that, showing off their work and, and, and everything. I, it, I like the hobby mainly because of the creativity. Like that, yeah. that's a big thing for me. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I think it's, it really is, I, well, see, when I started, it was very much so, it was very creative people, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that there's not very creative people in the hobby now, there, there is, there's some amazing artists uh, out there, but I, I've started to notice a little bit of a shift as I've gotten older to people that just play, they don't care about painting, they don't care about mm -hmm. models, and that seemed odd to me, I, I think it's because I come from a very creative background, and the whole reason I got into this was because I could paint these little things. Um, you know, I, I wasn't just making things out of Play-Doh or clay or anything like that, like I kind of was before, or just drawing. But you know, there was these uh, these great little miniatures that had the that had stories to them. They had uh, backgrounds. They had uh, aesthetics that could we could do a lot with. And hey, what if I put the knife on this guy that didn't come with a knife? Um, mm. But no, it it's yeah. There's a lot of creative outlets, and some people aren't. I don't know. It's I love how different the hobby actually is and how encompassing it can be. There's so many different facets to this one thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, there are folks out there who just like to read, uh, yeah. you know, the 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 fiction, whether yeah. it's uh, fiction for um, you know, for for Warhammer stuff, whether it's fiction for Dungeons and Dragons, whether it's fiction for oh, BattleTech has got tons of novels. I mean, oh, there's like so all kinds of different. <laughs> Yeah, there's all kinds of things like that out there. And there are people out there who are like, I really like that, but I have never played and I don't buy them and paint them or put them together or nothing. And then there are some folks, like I know a guy who just likes to build. Like he never paints. He does it and, it, and he never plays. He just loves to kit bash and stuff like that. And when he gets done, like these models, like he doesn't even prime them. You know, like so there's like green stuff and, this, and like different, this is plastic and this is metal and these are different parts and they look weird, but that's just what he, That's it's the action. It's the actual, you know, doing it with his hands. That's what he really likes to do. And I've said to him, like, you know, you could prime those at the very end, just like you dust them from above with like some, and he's like, no, I, I just like them this way. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, so there's a lot of different options like that. And most yeah. hobbies, like I'm sure there are people out there who just read about fishing, but never fish. I mean, yeah. I guess there probably are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's just, it's interesting interesting to see how people um kind of interact with their hobbies and i think that's pretty important yeah yeah because i think we have to we have to remember a lot of this and when we start bringing the internet and discussions into it a lot of people do forget that hobbies as much as we share it with other people is still a very personal thing mm -hmm. it's no, uh, absolutely like even uh say for example you know the you, when you went to vinticon uh and everybody's sitting around painting but you don't like to paint with other people that's a right. that's a very quiet it's your own time that's you get into your zone um and it's i noticed a lot of comments uh on the videos just saying you know that's that that's peculiar why why won't adam paint with his friends and, mm -hmm. and i just thought of that was the first thing that came to mind it's like because he doesn't like to that's uh, yeah 
I thought I, I, for a, for a hot second, I was like, well, maybe people will think that I actually don't know how to paint. And I'm like, but I do it on <laughs> Twitch twice a week, so they've seen me do it. I, they know that I can technically paint. I'm not anywhere near as good as those guys for sure. But yeah, no, for me, um, you know, hanging out with them, they're they're great guys, and 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 that's a lot of fun. Um, and like you know, and we got to do some play testing, and we got to just hang out, and 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 it was just a good time. Um, talk about all kinds of different things. Like that all being said, ancient. yeah, exactly, yeah, 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 exactly. Like Sam's, like Sam's game. I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to to buying the first copy of that. Um, <laughs> but the 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 trick is, is that it for me, yeah, for me, like other than on Twitch, painting is headphones on, listening to an audiobook, listening to a podcast, something like that, and it just work. And so I'm like, that's not going to be interesting to anybody else to have me just hunched over over here, just painting and not like listening to anybody or anything like that. But that's just the way that I get my. That's the way I get my best painting done, I think, yeah. you know. Um, when I am painting on Twitch, uh, it is a situation of I'm honestly chatting far more than I'm painting in any given situation. It will take me forever to get stuff done, but that's because I'm not there to just paint silently and you to watch. I'm there to have a conversation with you and sometimes put actual, you know, paint on a model, and that's fine yeah. too. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, it was uh, it was still a great time. Like, I got a, a bunch of building done, um, and I, I built my the piece that I'm going to enter in the Capital Palette, which is the yep. Nova Open uh, competition. I got that built and um, figured out what size and what kind of shape plinth I'm going to be working with on that. And I got uh, six um, squats, uh, League of Otan, like regular yep. Hearthkin, regular troops. Got those yep. guys this uh, built. This is what's to me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to, um, and uh, and so, yeah, but I'm going to be using them for, I wrote up a list before I even started building. I wrote up a list yep. of them for um, Space Weirdos. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be using those guys in that. And um, what else did I do? I don't know. I ate a lot of snacks, more snacks than I probably should have. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I know it was, it was a great time. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it, it really seems like it. And it's like, I'm, I'm slowly making my way through the Vinci Con Elite uh you know who was invited i think uh mm -hmm. scott scott is the last one because i actually have sam uh next week for an interview oh nice nice yeah. um and i i've really got to say uh a lot of you guys are exactly as you appear uh in your videos it's it was really really cool just seeing how incredibly genuine the people were behind the videos because you know there there can be a lot of production kind of go into these things and you know there, there's the old trope of you know once cameras go off how different some actors uh in the news can be but yeah it's it's been really refreshing um I, john is just john uh mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly how you see him um not so much his own videos. I think he's a little bit of a dialed down version of himself in his own videos. And then you see him kind of uh, go the full John in Trapped Under Plastic. Sure, yeah. And then, yeah, it's to the same thing. Before I, I hit record, the conversations that we were having, it was like half an hour before we pressed record. And it was just so unabashedly himself. That's exactly what we say. And from talking to you, the exactly what I was hoping you would be kind of thing uh i, th I think honestly <laughs> well i i appreciate that i honestly think that it comes from the fact that there's not particularly anybody getting rich yeah in yeah. this you know what i mean like if you're like an actor and you're like making a whole bunch of money and you're you're well you're an actor you're like you you you, you have like you 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 play a part I don't know that any of us are necessarily any good actors, particularly. I don't know. I haven't tried making any films with any of us particularly yet, you know, but not not in that way. But um, but you see what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. the, the concept of, like, well, you know, you know this person from all of these different roles, and then you talk to them, you bump into them someplace or whatever, and they're not like that person. That's because they were acting. With yeah. us... Yeah, I, I think it would be very weird if you had somebody with a with a, a YouTube audience that wasn't particularly that huge, you know, and I'm not even talking about in comparison. I'm just talking about, you know, in comparison to like uh, a person on television, a person in the yep. movies, that kind of stuff. Um, and if they were like totally different people, it just, I mean, first of all, I also think that specifically in the internet these days, people can tell. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I think that people used to be a lot less savvy about like what was going on with, you know, this person and then the character. And these days, like 
there's not a lot of characters. There's people generally being themselves for the most part, not always, yeah. but for the most part. Uh, and, and specifically within our, um, within our little tiny niche, you know, um, but even within like video gaming and stuff like that, which is way bigger than us, most of the people who are generally like they're playing games that they enjoy. Yeah. They may end up doing like a sponsored thing here and there where they play this game because it's good money or whatever. I've already told my, my viewers for years, uh, the last several years that if I ever do a video with, um, where I talk about, uh, raid shadow legends, it's because they finally said yes to the, I think, usually I tell Raid Shadow Legends that I'll do a video for them for $15,000 <laughs> because I'm just, because they, they send out stuff like, once you get to a certain size within YouTube, they just pepper those offers out to everybody. Oh, hey, do a video. You just need to talk about our game for like this much of time within a video. Or if you're on a stream, well, heck, just got to just play our game for like an hour and a half and then this and blah, blah. No, no, thank you. Um like that's not what I'm. That's not what my channel's about. We're not yeah. playing video games, particularly every once in a while on on, on Twitch. I play a video game, but it's pretty rare. Um, Bring out a miniature but, and we'll talk. Right, I'm, yeah. I'm like, but I'm like, you know, I've, I've told my viewers, if you see that video, don't watch it. Number one, number two, know that I got the bag on that. So that's fine. You know, I guess if they finally decided that you, okay, cool, we'll t we'll take your luff, then great. <laughs> but yeah, it's in general the people who are doing this, making videos for YouTube or making videos for you know TikTok, whatever yeah. uh about wargaming they're doing it because they enjoy it uh yeah. because because it's not like you know incredibly crazy lucrative or anything like that so yeah yeah no it's uh, i just i've i've loved how this this tiny little thing that i'm doing uh has i, I i'm not gonna say exploded uh it's it's been a, a slow growth um but the kind of access that we've had to people uh that you wouldn't actually assume you'd have access to out of a con, which brings up my actual question of what after people kind of uh, spend so many hours and like you know years after years after years of watching the channel, feeling like they're getting to know you. What are the interactions like when you meet them at a con? Is it kind of they walk into thinking they've just got he's their best friend that they haven't actually spoken to? Or I mean, there's a lot of talk these days about parasocial relationships, which is basically yeah. that thing. You 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 listen to this podcast or you watch this YouTuber or streamer or whatever, and you feel you know them yeah. because you've just been on the one side of the one sided conversation this entire time. They talk about what's going on with their lives and oh, like time the car didn't work and you know, and I gotta get that fixed. And, my girlfriend said this and oh my cat did this funny thing or whatever the deal is and so it's as if you know them but you don't realize just because as humans we've never had this before too much where i know tons about you but you don't know anything about me yes. you know what i mean like that yeah. kind of that kind of one-sided thing um people are generally pretty good about it though like you know people will if you talk to see people for a while they'll be like well I, you know i know you've got cats you know and that kind of stuff and so they'll bring those things up but for the most part, no, it's always been, I've always had great interactions. I've never had, um, you know, people come up and say hi at conventions and things like that. It's a touch tougher now, like just because of like, like with Gen Con, like the last two years, like 2022, 2021, you know, they've had this mask mandate, which I understand. Um, but then it's harder to kind of like recognize people sometimes, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> so there's, there's that. Uh, and so it doesn't, it doesn't happen as much as it did. I mean, 2019, before everything went all squirrely, um, like yeah it was uh like just walking through even like gen con which is really not a very m miniature like heavy convention yep. i would say of the four genres miniatures is the lowest um at that particular convention as opposed to adepticon but like at adepticon it's just kind of constant people <laughs> being like hey i like your videos or whatever that kind of stuff and just wanting to, to converse you know conversate and that's that's very cool um so i i do enjoy that um but it's also nice because it doesn't follow me around all the time it doesn't yep. i mean i have had people like in the real world for lack of a better term who have recognized me like one time i was buying something at home depot no uh office max which i don't even think they're in business anymore but the kid like at the at the at the checkout counter was like can i ask you a weird question and i was like yeah and he's like do you have a youtube channel and i was like yeah you know so it, that happens once in a great while outside yep. of that realm but when you go to conventions and stuff like that then you know it oh, it's yeah. it, um it's, it's, it's like fun. You're stepping it's, into it's your cool. world when you get to like Adepticon and that kind of thing. A little bit, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I love Adepticon because of that. Just because, well, not even so much that part. I love Adepticon because it's like, 
it's I'm, I've, I've said it before. It's like Gen Con is like a fishing convention, yep. whereas Adepticon is like a trout fishing convention. Like yeah. everybody, yeah. like if you could be standing in line to get a hot dog at Gen Con, and the person in front of you is a cosplayer, the person behind you plays role playing games, and you don't have necessarily a ton to talk about, but you know, pretty much everybody who's standing in line for those hot dogs at um, at at Adepticon is there to yeah. to to play miniature games, and you may play different miniature games than that, but it's 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 about miniature games, so you've got yeah. a lot more to talk about. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. So with the with the channel, since you know we are talking uh, just about a ten year anniversary, is mm-hmm. is there a big planned uh, video to celebrate that? You know, because we we get the awards every year, um, sure, which is fantastic. It's it's one of the I love how it's it's very lighthearted, but still, um, I don't know what the word is. Uh, it's just it's a lot of fun. Just to, to say, I'm not I'm so mainly serious. trying to get people to. I get people all the time who say, you know, like you know a lot about a lot of stuff. Like you, like I've never heard of that thing you just mentioned, or I've never yep. heard of like this, or I've never, you know, that kind of stuff. So I kind of look at that kind of as a to some degree as like a yearly like not even like i'm not trying to say this is the best of this or this is the best of that i'm just like here are some things that i thought were really cool here's what i found and they may have not even necessarily come out this year maybe they came out three years ago but i just found them this year so here you go so it's it is a little it's pretty tongue-in-cheek you know as as it is anyway but i do like being able to kind of spread that out i've had someone like someone just recently was like you should make a website and just put everything you know about wargaming in it and i'm like that seems like a lot of work <laughs> so I, I, don't know. I don't know what i'm doing for the next 10 years but it's not that right yeah yeah, yeah. it just seems like a lot i mean to some degree i mean you know but nonetheless something like that something crowdsourced somehow yeah. i'm not sure who would then admin it and how that but something like that would be cool but to be fair we have you know Wikipedia. there's google yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. People are like, how do you find sci-fi miniatures that you, I'm like, you type in sci-fi miniatures into Google and then, and then you start, I mean, that's, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how else to tell you. Um, that's, that's where a lot of the stuff comes from. Or sometimes you're at a convention and you pick up a thing and you're like, I've never heard of this company before. And then you get home yeah. and you look them up and they've got other stuff and you're like, that's cool. And you buy it. And, and yeah, it's just, but again, it also takes time. Uh, as far as a big 10 year anniversary video or anything like that, I don't know. I haven't really thought that far on ahead. I never really do, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, I generally have a tendency uh, to very frequently, I literally come up with the idea for Friday's video on the day before. So yep. um, I think that's it's, what makes uh, it so it's, genuine though, because you, you're going in. I hope. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to say unplanned or underplanned, mm-hmm. but you're going mm-hmm. in very, very raw. You you have the idea. You go in. This is just it. I'm not gonna research and research and research and have that for my opinion based off of what I've read uh, and what other people's opinions are. Yeah, because that can happen pretty quickly, uh, and that can get pretty dangerous at time when we're talking about you know people realizing uh, you know people being genuine, which is a big thing. But yeah. no, I, I think that's what one of the most endearing things uh, about your channel, and probably what what kind of uh, dragged me in. And I'm going to say dragged because <laughs> <laughs> because like originally it's the first few videos, uh, it, it's simply just man talks about toys. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. um i don't know you you kind of you start to romanticize this but in a very um very down to earth way that kind of it, it sucks you in it does it's it really drags you into it and you're just like okay i now want to hear him talk about something that i don't know about so sure you can you can go through any of the videos of uh, you know on tabletop videos at random and you can just be there for the next half an hour and that's fine that's no problem at all. Uh, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I, 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 there's a, there's a lot of videos out there um, that I see that have a lot of. Um, I don't want to say polish. I'm not saying that. I, 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 I try to keep my stuff relatively polished. I like to yeah. use, you know, decent cameras. I'm a camera nerd. I'm a yeah, photography yeah. guy. You know, and I like to light well, and I like to do that kind of stuff. But it is also very frequently on a very quick turnaround. So I don't have a ton of time for lots of B-roll, like insert yeah. shots and all that kind of stuff. You know, I've had people before going say like, 
well, when you're talking about the primer, why don't you show a picture of the can of primer? I'm like, because then I have to go and find the picture or take yeah. a picture or take some video of it. And the thing that I have found through the years of doing this is that the vast majority of people who are watching my videos are listening to my videos yeah. while they're doing this and they're painting. So if I spend a whole bunch of time to make the visuals really go to town, that's cool. But half the people aren't looking at the screen. They've got it on and they're listening to it at like a podcast and they're painting yep. and painting and whatever. Like, and I, I figured that out because I had a t-shirt, my first t-shirt design when I did it in like 2016, I was making this little lower thirds thing pop up at the bottom during the video to say, hey, pre-order this t-shirt, blah, blah, blah. And people weren't doing it much. Yep. And then what I did was when I made it pop up in the future, I made like a weird like guitar, like kind of twang, you know, like when the string breaks and it makes that yep. kind of boing, boing, boing noise. I would do that. And then all of a sudden people were like, oh, I saw that thing that you did, that, that the, the little thing. Because if you put a noise in there, if they're sitting there painting, they're like, the heck is that? Oh, look, he's got a T-shirt for sale. So yep. like I, I, I know that people aren't looking that hard or, you know, there are certainly some that are very dialed in for whatever reason uh, and that's yep. fine. But there's a lot of people who are painting and not listening. So... Now, I still want to do some things. I want to get more into that and be able to kind of get a little bit more filmmakery sometimes, not all the time, not in every video. But, you know, it comes down to time. And like right now, I technically have three jobs because I've got my normal day job and then I've got Tabletop Minions, which is not just YouTube, but also Twitch and, you yeah. know, all that. And then also now the, the, the game company, Starling Badger Studios. So, um, you know, we'll see going forward. Um, my day job is changing because I am becoming a little bit more freelance, basically yep. to give me more time to do the other stuff. So that's helpful. But um, that's just kind of you know, switched in the last like three, four months. So I'm, you know, kind of still getting my sea legs kind of underneath me on on that new uh, after working for, I don't know, 40 years or whatever, not 40, <laughs> 35 maybe <laughs> years. Starting in the salt mines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, as a 10 year old. Um, but yeah, so it is a, it, it, it's, it's interesting. And it's, it's, um, uh, one of the things that I love about making content, specifically YouTube and all that kind of stuff, but also Twitch and all the different places, is it's, you, you, you have to constantly, you have to be really glad to learn. You have to be very yes. interested in learning because there's a lot to learn. And, uh, you know, since very few of us can just pay a bunch of people to do it for us, we all kind of have to do it ourselves. And so, uh, you know, as long as you like that kind of stuff, it's going to definitely be something that will constantly still throw challenges in your way and allow you to oh, yeah. keep learning, you know. Yeah, and you also, I found too, yeah, you have to be willing to experiment. Uh, mm -hmm. Like there's some, it's, a lot of people seem to think you, uh, you make a video, you put the video out, and then there you go, you've made a million dollars. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. very the actual opposite. Um, sure, absolutely, yeah. Like, you know, I I've, mean, yeah, like any given time, like, you know, um, with YouTube specifically, you know this, using the YouTube studio or whatever app, like it will tell you when your new video goes up, it'll tell you yep. where it's ranked in comparison to your last, well, including that one, the last 10 videos. Yep. And you're always looking for that, like, one out of 10 or two yep. out of 10, but every once in a while, you're like, well, sometimes more than often than not, you're like, oh, that was a nine out of 10. Like my, you know, my most recent video from this last week didn't do nearly as well as the one the week previous, you know? And so yeah. it's constantly this thing and you're like, it's ups and downs and it's back and forth. And sometimes you think this is going to hit, this is going to do well, yeah. and it doesn't. And there's other times when you're like, I don't think this video worked and it does amazing. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, I've been doing it for 10 years. I still have no idea exactly how it works. <laughs> Well, it's funny because, like, obviously, I I, uh, I I take in a lot of content from um, you know YouTube pros and you mm -hmm. know, people giving advice, and even the the interviews that I've seen from people that work at YouTube, they haven't explained it very succinctly. Uh, mm -hmm. They like I don't know if it's they don't want to give away any secrets of how to you know break the algorithm, or if they just don't know. Um, I think it's a little Which, bit of column A, a little bit of column B, yeah. to be perfectly honest with you. You know, I think that they obviously don't want no people to know how the algorithm yeah. specifically works. Um, but also, I think that they don't 100% really know themselves to some degree. There are times when some stuff goes life. real squirrely yeah. and no, and then they have to figure it out how to fix it. But that's that's computers in general, really. But yeah, I mean, the algorithm, it seems these days that the algorithm works a lot and it's 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 what people have been talking about lately and it makes a lot of sense it's not about the it's not about youtube paying attention to your channel it's about youtube paying attention to what people watch yeah 
they don't care about your channel. Nope. The, the algorithm doesn't go, oh, they didn't you know, do this, so they're therefore let's not show it to people, or they didn't, or they, they talked about Warhammer, or they didn't talk about Warhammer, or they talked, you know, it, it has nothing to do with that. It's like it starts giving the, the, the video shortly after it launches, it starts giving the video out to people who generally watch your stuff and then looks and sees how many of them are watching. And if it yeah. turns out a bunch of them aren't, then it doesn't show them to as many people going forward. But if a bunch of those people checked it out, then they'll show it to more. And because they just want people to watch videos, that's literally yeah. what they, that's the only thing. And so they're not gonna show videos that people aren't gonna watch to people when they could show them instead videos they will watch. So yeah. it's, it's about that kind of early velocity and, and that kind of stuff. And the reason that maybe a, a, a you know a video with with Warhammer in the title might do better than a video that doesn't have Warhammer in the title is because Warhammer is popular. So people are yeah. like, oh, I like Warhammer, I'll watch that. But if you talk about something that's unpopular or not very popular, they might be less likely to watch it in the same numbers. And so therefore, it's so it's yeah, it has nothing to do directly with what you're talking about. It's with it's all about how people are responding to it, and especially yeah. early on, you know? Yeah, it makes a huge difference, but it is it is just that thing of, uh, you know, you can't plan to go viral. It's, right. right, exactly, <laughs> you, yeah. Like, and I've said a lot, of, uh, a, lot of pay, a lot of places, you know, trying to sell the idea that, uh, you know, we, we will make your video go viral. We can, we can do mm -hmm. this, we can do that for you. It's, uh, it's not a thing. <laughs> Don't listen yeah, yeah. to them. No, um, you can't. You can't check the button or check the box that says "make this go viral." That's not. Yeah. A, that's. There's. I man, I wish there was. That'd be awesome. Yeah. But yeah, then it's everybody even, would do it, and it wouldn't matter. Yeah, it's even like the uh, the paid advertisement kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it can't. Um, it gives you a very wide number of how many views you'd expect to get from it. It could be you know between two to fifty thousand. Well, great. That's what a lot of these videos are doing to start with. Uh, why am I mm -hmm. paying for this kind of thing? But right, no, it's, exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. So before we get wrapped up, mm -hmm. um, I have I usually play a quick shot game uh, with guests. So I'm going to throw out a few different game systems, and I want you to tell me if uh, you've played them or would plan to play them or enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... We've already actually knocked out the first two, 40K and AOS. Uh, mm -hmm. As you expect, uh, they're pretty big ones. Uh, sure. Not overly fussed on them at the moment. Used to play fifth, sixth, kind of started to fall off in seventh because it was pretty chunky. Started playing in eighth quite a bit again. And then I don't know if I've even played a single game of ninth. Um, because, th because then Kickstarter, uh, Kickstarter, because then, um, Kill Team came out. Yep. So I was, that, that was, that's where I ended up. Uh, Age of Sigmar, I played Age of Sigmar 1 and 2, loved them both. And Age of Sigmar 3 is just, in my opinion, got too much stuff. It's got more stuff in it than I want. There's too many things to track and this and that. And so I just kind of fell off of that. And then again, you know, uh, Warcry. So yep. there's that, you know. Yep. Uh, what about, uh, Conquest or anything from Parabellum? Um, I don't like rank and flank games. Yep. Now they've got uh, a secondary game called First Blood, First Blood. which they've actually <laughs> launched a new, a new, yeah. <laughs> yes, First Blood Two, uh, and I, I played a demo of it at Gen Con 2021, I think. Yep. And frankly, it's. I thought it was going to be a skirmish, five to seven models who could all kind of move independently and whatnot. But it's basically a little bit more, instead of being rank and flank, you know, where you're moving those rectangles, instead it's more a game kind of like Age of Sigmar, where you're moving yeah. groups in units, but you do have some big monsters and things like that. Um, the early models were interesting sculpts, but the molds were really not very good, so everything was very, very smoothed. There was nothing yeah. that had a sharp edge to it. But honestly, the things they've been making over the last two, three years, I think have been really nice looking. Oh, yeah. um, the full I still wish anybody. that they would. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I still just really wish that they would just make like a straight up normal, like just small skirmish game. And maybe they will. I hope that they, they do at some point. Like they make um, first blood skirmish or something like that. Yeah, no, fingers. I definitely fingers crossed for that. Uh, mm -hmm. What else have we got? Ancient Egypt. <laughs> I have not gotten a chance to play it yet. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, airbrushing eggs could be interesting, but I think a little samey after a while. I suppose it depends if you can glue a bunch of stuff to the outside. I don't know about the longevity, though. Like, what happens, like, the eggs are going to get a little weird after a while, I would think. And well, they're very, they're delicate. 
I suppose they're, they're also cheap, and you know, do you get? Um... Oh, they're not. They're not in America. They're not cheap. They oh, recently. Really? Egged, oh yeah, no, we had to. We had to get rid of all the chickens, or something terrible happened. There was bird flu, and so now eggs are super crazy expensive in the United States right now oh, because we. There was a yeah. Oh yeah, no, that's <laughs> that's also kind of a problem, which I guess that we hadn't thought about even during VinciCon. Like it had started, but right now, yeah, eggs are real expensive. So, you know, oh, we'll we, see how that works. we might have to. Ask Sam about, you know, if he's going to get plastic molded eggs. See, that would be a good idea. Yeah, then definitely mm. that's a different story. It'd, it'd be, it'd be, it's, uh, I'm going to talk to Sam about this. It, uh, this was like the first thing on the list when Sam said mm. this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But just the, the ins and outs of what could actually be done with something like this. You know, the <laughs> are quail eggs, uh, you know, cheaper in points or. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a good question. Yeah. Or are they more expensive because of, you know, the, not so much the size, but uh, the quality don't, of Don't ever let anybody tell you that time at the airport is wasted time. Because I'm pretty <laughs> sure that he came up with this concept while waiting to to fly to Columbus. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's where this came from. Yeah, yeah. All right, back to uh, back to the existing game. Uh, mm -hmm. Battletech, which we have touched on a little bit today. I, again, it was a game I played in middle school and some in college, and I appreciate it, but it is more... It is more crunch that I'm that I'm interested in these days, and I understand yep. there's also Alpha Strike and all that, which is slightly simpler. But still, like that Alpha Strike book is also still real thick. Um, yeah. So it's just not quite for me. And I, I like I said, especially since with um, Steel Rift, I, that's like for me a good alternative, yeah. and that's what I want to do. So yeah, no, that's that's something I've been wanting to check out for quite a while actually, because mm -hmm. I think it's going to be the closest thing I can get to to a miniature version of Gundam Wing. Um, I'm vaguely familiar with Gundam stuff, but not very, to yeah, be honest I, with you. So I, I don't no know. That's a good question. Games. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Which is strange because it's a, it's a massive. It's it's already in the kit building community. Like it's a lot of hobbyists already into it, but the, the, I, the IP just hasn't translated. I wonder if it's literally the um the scale because like terrain for some of those figures, <laughs> then everything would have to be really big. Like I was kicking yeah. around the idea, like, can I do a battle report with those joy toy action figures, you know, uh, that are like eighth yep. scale or 18th <laughs> scale or whatever they are. And then I was like, well, that'd be kind of cool. But then I'm like, where am I going to get terrain? And I'm going to have to scratch build it all. And then where am I going to keep it? Cause the ruined building is going to be three feet tall. And they're like, nah, yeah. So I don't <laughs> see myself going down that road, but yeah, so, I, I'm assuming it's a scale issue. Yeah, you start looking on a uh, Craigslist for uh, old cubby houses and. Oh <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Um, so one that you have spoken about recently on and every other Sunday, Shatterpoint. Mm -hmm. I am not sure about it. Like I we really haven't seen a lot. <laughs> no, we haven't. Not particularly. I really want there to be a skirmish Star Wars game. I was kind of hoping they were just going to make it an add-on for Legion. Yep. It looks like it's not. It looks, if I if I had to guess, and this is just me trying not to be psychic, but might be a little bit psychic, I get the feeling it is going to be a lot like Marvel Crisis Protocol. Yep. Also, including the scale. I, I get a feeling they're going to be heading towards 40 millimeter. I don't think they've said, but they have said, I believe, that it is not the same scale as Legion. Yeah, so the, there was actually, there's a photo in one of the Atomic Mass Games groups uh, of a Legion uh, Darth Maul next to the new Shatterpoint models. And yeah, mm -hmm. there's, there's a significant difference. Right. Um, and base sizing looks like the Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff too. Right. And so then that means that now your terrain doesn't work if you want to be in both games at the same time. They're not the same size terrain and there's this and that. And there's all the other problems that go with changing scale size like that. I got it. I, it made sense with Marvel because, and I was just talking about this, with Marvel, like, th that game happens in the modern day. And you yeah. can go to the, your railroad train store and buy O-scale buildings and then yep. use them, like, right there. Boom, it's the right size and everything's great and all that stuff. But you can't find Star Wars buildings too much in size scale O or whatever for trains. It's just, I mean, maybe, but I don't think so. Um, now, admittedly, if you're into 3D printing, you can just take a normal size STL that's like 28 millimeter and just scale it up. Scale that's it up, fine. Yeah. But, you know, uh, that's not within everybody's grasp. So yeah. they're going to end up having to, like, initial early on, they just aren't going to have much terrain like they didn't with Legion. And then, like, frankly, they didn't with um, with Marvel. I mean, they had, like, the yeah. stuff that came in the box. It was a little convenience store and, like, a dumpster and some stuff. Now they have a bunch of stuff, but it's all also real expensive, you know, like that... The Sanctum Sanctorum and like the, yeah. the the Brooklyn buildings and all those different things are not cheap. So 
yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not putting out much hope for it, uh, but we'll see, I guess. I, I'd love to, I'm hoping to be able to play a demo at Gen Con this year. Yep. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm really, I really hope it's great. Because, you know, one, Star Wars is cool. It's Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, but I also really like, you know, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, sure, sure. Again, because I liked X Men, like you know, they 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 grabbed me right in between of that. I'm a war gamer, uh, but I am now also in my early to mid thirties and live in a state of constant nostalgia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that's I think that's a big thing. All right, before we wrap it up, is there anything that you want to plug? What have you got coming up uh, for the channel for Snarling Badger Studios? Anything that you've got going? Um, just still making videos pretty much every Friday. Got the every other Sunday show every other Sunday, strangely enough. Um, oh, those are Monday both on YouTube. <laughs> it's true. It's a good point. <laughs> um, and then, uh, I stream on Twitch twice a week, Monday yep. nights, uh, and Friday mornings. And, um, then snarlingbadger.com is, uh, your, um, your guide to all of the, um, well, to both of the games that we've published so far, but we'll be publishing a new game this year. We're basically making a game a year. And uh, actually, a good portion of yesterday, I worked on um, uh, merch for Snarling Badger. So for Rain and Hell merch, uh, Space Station Zero merch, and just regular old, you know, Snarling Badger merch for, merch for people who are into that. Uh, so that'll be that'll be coming soon. Be that'll be coming a good deal before the uh, the next game. Uh, so yeah. Excellent. So the the train just keeps chugging. Oh, it does. It does. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I would do if I wasn't doing this. I would do something else, I guess. But I would always be making something. I always yeah. really enjoy creating stuff, whether it's content or miniatures or games or all three. As long as, as, long as you're doing something. Yep, yep. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, I will have all the uh, bits and pieces below for all of Adam's pages, um, all the socials, YouTubes, but... Let's be completely honest, you were here for him, not for me, so you already know where to find him. <laughs>